Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good evening. Welcome to another edition of Health Matters Live here yeah, at ITV Studios in Sunny Hill Santon, Johannesburg. I'm Khawa Solomon. And remember, if you want to catch us anywhere in the world, please do live stream on itvnetworks.tv. Also follow over, I think it's almost 200 episodes now of Health Matters on YouTube. Any health, social health related, medical related issues you can find on Health Matters ITV on YouTube. World Kidney Day is what we're going to be talking about today. The function of your kidneys. Do you know why they're actually in your body? What they're doing in your body? I know some, some people have a little bit of a kidney infection. There's some people that um, goes for dialysis regularly. You hear all these things about kidneys, chronic kidney diseases. But what do our kidneys really do? Why are they in our body? What is their function? Um, can we offer them as a transplant? But I, went, I took, this, took to the streets and um, let's hear what some of the, I was at a function this weekend and uh, some of the people had some very interesting things to say. So take a listen. Kidneys, do you know how they function in your body? No. Uh, I understand that it's, it's to, maybe to do with urine, urination and all that, but um, I don't have so much details around this, you know. Yeah, they're important. Yeah. Uh, they filter out all the toxins. Okay. Yes, that's what I know about <laughs> kidneys. I think the kidneys are to clean, to clean something <laughs> or another, clean the blood. So whatever you take into your body, your kidneys filter, and that's why you need to pee, basically. <laughs> They obviously have a very critical function. Um, to what extent, I really couldn't tell you medically, but obviously they've got a very important function. It's also about what you eat and what you, and, and the drinking, the lifestyle that you, you carry on from a younger age. And if you're not careful, if you don't watch certain things, then it can lead to um, uh, issues of um, renal failure. And sometimes dialysis is the only option before you actually get to renal failure. Very important part, very important part. And this is why we need to drink lots and lots and lots of water, which people, I see people there and they sip and they sip and that's not enough. While I was on my chemotherapy treatment, I was told to drink 10 glasses of water a day. Imagine trying to drink 10. I've brought it down now to six and, and six is comfortable, you know, and it's so important. Too. We were lucky that when my father actually was diagnosed, he managed to get a kidney transplant and for the next 15 years we were able to have a life with him. So from a personal experience, I kind of know that part of life. No, no it, 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 it is. I mean, if you're not, if, you, if your kidney is not proper, I mean, are you going to survive properly? So I think I I suffered from UTI, I think in my first year of marriage, I, I, I married a virgin and yeah. that part I remember very clearly. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it was directly linked to intercourse and to, uh, yeah, yeah. And thereafter we got it cleared up and never had it since. Yeah, no, I've had mine also tested recently and it's basically all clear. So it's good to know that your kidneys are functioning properly. There we go. <laughs> That's what uh, you had to say uh, about your kidneys. So let's hear from the specialist, nephrologist, back to back in studio with us, Dr. Shu'ay Wadi. What was that look, Dr. Wadi? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. <laughs> Interesting look, huh? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Some of the comments were very Some of the comments, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Dr. Um, Mashabane from Bada, Head of Renal uh, Department at Baraguana Hospital. Chris Hani, Baraguana. Chris, Chris Hana. you just said Bada, so I'm going to stick with Bada. <laughs> I like to add <laughs> academic hospital. Academic hospital. <laughs> I know one of the doctors I came in and they said, Chris Hani, academic, but... Okay. Chris Hani Baraguana Academic Hospital. Mm -hmm. I think it was two doctors ago. Okay. But there we go. Dr. Mashapane from Bara, uh, head of renal, what, like 11 years now? Well done. Um, but of course, our nephrologist that joins us every other weekend is with us this week, Dr. Shuaib Wadi. 12th of March, highlighting World Kidney Day, the most beautiful organ in the body to you. <laughs> I've Please, said introduce that many the, times. Please introduce I've today's said that many show. Times. So, yes. as you know, uh, kidneys are the most important organ of your body. Um, <laughs> well, some people didn't even know. They what didn't it even is. know yeah. what they do. I mean, so to say that um, the product of your kidney is urine mm. is like saying that what your car does for you is produce exhaust fumes. Okay. So that's not the product of a kidney is balance. 
It keeps your body in balance. It keeps your body uh, in a stable homeostasis, we call it. Okay. That means homeostasis is a Greek word, which means the same state. So it keeps your, uh, your blood in a stable state so that your cells can function. Mm. And it does that by removing excess uh, products which you put into your body through your diet. So for example, if you drink uh, three liters of water and your body doesn't need three extra liters of water, it will get that water, rid of that and, water. And often they say looking it, at your urine will show what you're eating. The well, color we'll of get urine. to that. Yes. We'll get to okay. that. But if you, say, if, you, if you have too much salt in your diet mm. and your body doesn't need that extra salt, it will get rid of that salt. Okay. If you have too much acid in your diet, too much toxins, and besides your diet, you're generating toxins from metabolism. And those toxins have to be removed. Uh, and your kidney is, is part of the function uh, together with your liver and some other cells which mm. removes those toxins from your body so that your body can remain in a stable and steady state. So are we really aware, Dr. Mashavani, that our kidneys is the filter function? In mean, us? Do we know on a daily basis? Do we know that? <laughs> Look, Talk to us about the real function and how Look, important just for to us to know. on that what Dr. Wadish just said. You know, except for the water balance, mm. you know, which is what most, some of the, some of the comments that we had, you mm. know, and, uh, you know, the acid-base balance as well is quite important. Okay. And um, it's one of the things that we tend to deal with, you know, once your kidneys are gone, you know, you'll start battling, you know, to keep that acid-base under control. You know, so your water balance, your electrolyte balance, your acid-base mm. balance, whole lots of other factors as well. So, so is it true then to say that the kidney, because I was just Googling and finding yeah. more information about the kidneys, because doctor, uh, what is not always available when I have a kidney question. So, you know, Google, Dr. Google <laughs> is, is out nice, there, is which, and we need to discuss that as well. You know, how safe is Dr. Google mm. out there? So is it true that the, that the kidney conditions are mostly prevalent in certain cases, um, or is it age-related? Does it affect children? Well, I mean, it is. It is entirely true. I mean, um, some conditions, we know, for example, that African-Americans are more prone to kidney disease. You know, some Hispanics groups as well. And um, so there is that racial predisposition to kidney yeah. disease. And, um, you know, physiologically, you know, once you get to a certain age, you know, we'll say plus 40 and beyond, mm. You start losing as part of aging a certain percentage of your kidney function. Actually. You know, that tends to be insignificant and not even noticeable. Mm. But to those people who are predisposed, you know, who've got other conditions, other conditions yeah. you know, that decline can actually be accelerated. Mm. And in those people, they can actually end up presenting, you know, in different stages of kidney disease. Yeah. Let's look at um, some of the ways we can just, you know, off the cuff to keep our kidneys healthy and not get to that stage when we're at a, at a certain age and they could still function well, even though we might have some chronic disease. So, I mean, I think if we go back to um, what your kidneys do, as we said, they filter, uh, they work in a way which means that they deal with a hell of a lot of blood mm. uh, to be able to de uh, generate a filtrate. Okay. filter out the toxins. So your kidneys will be filter, filtering maybe like 100 moles per minute of filtrate uh, and they'll be getting uh, like a liter of blood per minute mm -hmm. uh, and then be, uh, they'll, be, they'll be cleansing that to try and get, uh, to get the toxins out. Okay. Uh, so that means that the kidneys are very susceptible to things which are in the blood, like toxins mm -hmm. which are in the blood. They're also very susceptible to changes in blood pressure. They're very susceptible to damage from medications. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of things which can damage the kidneys. And because your kidneys are functioning like just like your heart, like every other part of your body, they're functioning 24-7, 365. They don't get a holiday. They don't get a coronavirus comfort break. They don't get anything. <laughs> they're working all the time. Because of that, there's, they, you know, they, they can accumulate damage, even from mm. things which may be relatively minor. So the first thing is lifestyle, obviously. We do know that those things which affect uh, kidney function can be affected by lifestyle. So people who have high blood pressure or diabetes, which we now tend to appreciate as diseases of lifestyle, mm. people uh, can, can have accelerated kidney disease or can even cause kidney disease in the case of diabetes. People who are smokers, 
uh, can have accelerated kidney disease. People who pop a lot of medication, especially painkillers, mm. like anti-inflammatories and so forth, which often are taken because of abnormalities of lifestyle. They may have lower back pain or headaches because of stress or mm. overuse of caffeine and lots of other things. And then they use anti-inflammatories to reduce the headaches and then the anti-inflammatories damage the kidney. So how, lot, how is that? So a lot, a lot of things can cause damage to your kidneys mm. and there's specific mechanisms. Okay. Uh, so anti-inflammatory medications, which we use for arthritis, headaches, back pain, some of those things are specifically toxic to the kidneys under okay. certain circumstances. So All in anti-inflammatories on the whole? All of them. Wow. Uh, but not in everybody, okay. but in many people. Yeah. Okay, so, so how, do you, how do we help cleanse our kidneys? I know my, the, we have wonderful home remedies, you know, the, the omens that, are, mm. that they talk about. Um, and often you just, you know, take that advice and you think, oh, I feel a little bit better. So they put the coriander in the water or some crea and the boil it and that's what they drink all week to cleanse their cleanse the, the kidneys. But you've mentioned lifestyle. Is there anything else one can do on a daily basis to actually keep your kidneys clean? Maybe, you know, if I can just go back a okay. little bit on the lifestyle issue, because, you know, I, I usually say, you know, sometimes, you know, in the past, there mm. was so much focus on infectious, you know, conditions, TB, okay. which is still the fo uh, point of interest, mm. HIV, and other maybe infections that are not as common as they used to be before. Mm. And uh, but you know what has been neglected over some time is this non-communicable diseases. Mm. And I mean the issue of lifestyle and you know, the way we live now, you know, the prevalence of obesity that is going up in our society. Foods, yeah. You yeah. know, the kind of food that we eat, uh, less interest in terms of exercise. You know, all the drinks that we pop in day and you know day and night. You know, those things, as soon as your diabetes prevalence starts going up and your blood pressure mm. and everything else, your obesity, and those are direct, you know, contributors, causes um, in some instances of kidney disease. And in other instances, they can actually accelerate the rate of decline of your kidney functions. You know, so it's quite important, you know, to try and be as healthy as possible. Mm. You know, watch what you eat, exercise as tolerated. I'm not talking about somebody here who's trying to break records day in and day out. You know, drink, try to keep yourself yeah. well hydrated as well. I'm not saying take 10 liters of water a day, mm. you know, but you drink when you're thirsty to replenish whatever that you are, your daily losses every day. But a healthy lifestyle, you know, is actually the best way to start. So what you're saying is don't run for the quick remedies, start today. There's no quick fix, unfortunately. Yes. I mean, I think your kidney is not yeah. a dishwasher. No, it's You don't not. need to cleanse it. Like that. there's nothing like cleansing okay, the kidneys. But, but Dr. Wadi is getting, getting a, personal here. We're going to take a quick break. <laughs> We're going to take a, a quick break. strange concept there. When we come back, <laughs> this is his forte. So he's loving the subject in this discussion. We'll come back more. Remember, we're opening up our WhatsApp, our WhatsApp line as well as our live in-studio number if you've got any questions kidney-related as we focus on World Kidney Day. Back in a moment. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. A very good evening to you. This is Health Matters and uh, we unpack understanding our kidneys. Do you really know why they are there? What are their functions? We have a nephrologist time two in our studio today, uh, Dr. Mashabani and uh, Dr. Shu'aib Wadi. So I know, um, Dr. Wadi, you were, you were on a point very... Um, I was getting very, very heavy excited. On, yes, on, on so, that I mean, point. I think, and I see you I think, cool down a bit, I no, see. No, no, this concept <laughs> of you must cleanse your kidneys. Look, your kidneys are part of your body, which has got many mechanisms to cleanse itself. Mm. Uh, Allah SWT has put into place healing mechanisms which can heal itself. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, there are conditions which can damage the kidneys beyond repair, like any organ can da get damaged. Yeah. You don't have to specifically take something to cleanse your kidneys or to mm -hmm. rinse your kidneys. But what you need to do is stop putting things in which are going to continuously damage, damage or mm -hmm. put your kidneys at risk, like it's going to put other organs at risk. As I said, your kidneys are part of your body. So if you have, for example, too much salt in your diet, it pushes your blood pressure up can affect okay. your heart, can affect your kidney function. If you have anti-inflammatories, can affect cardiac function, can mm -hmm. affect your kidneys, can give you an ulcer. Understand? So you need to be cognizant of what you're putting into your body. 
there are these med medicines have good uses and mm. they can give you comfort and relief but there are many people who use them indiscriminately they use them without the understanding that if you overuse them or use them in the wrong circumstances they can harm you and that goes not only for uh, medicines that goes for some herbs and some other things as well okay. which can be toxic just because it's herbal mm. doesn't mean it's healthy no. just because it's natural remember cyanide also occurs naturally just because it's yeah, natural poison ivy as well. doesn't mean that it's good for you okay. so you need to be understanding of what you're putting into your body and how it can affect you so let's understand quickly the history around um, those that are affected with kidney function or kidney conditions you've mentioned there are some races there's age related of course as you get older it does unfortunately um, accelerate whatever condition and you've, you've spoken about chronic illnesses so who should be cautious out there well I think different age group but I mean just in general mm -hmm. I would say that number one if I was obese I'd be concerned about okay. my kidneys you know and if I was diabetic and high blood pressure mm -hmm. and on chronic medication for you that, know, for those and conditions. Uh, even for other conditions as okay. well, because sometimes the medications that we take, okay. you know, some cancer medications, for example, mm. you know, can predispose you to chronic kidney disease, okay. you know, and except for the cancer itself. But those are know. not always the questions that you you going to ask your doctor. Okay, you're giving me this 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 medication. Is it going to affect my kidneys? So oh. should we be asking those questions? Well, I mean, I deal as a practitioner. Mm. If I'm prescribing something to you. You know, ideally, I should be saying to you that, listen, these are the side effects. Mm. You know, if I'm going to be giving you non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, for example, I should be mentioning a few things, ulcers and other things. And, uh, you know, something that, you know, they are overlooked and mm. uh, we are too trusting as well as human beings. You know, there's always a package insert, you know, inside mm. every box of medication, but yeah. we can't even look at it. But uh, I mean, recurrent infections, you know, can also predispose you to kidney conditions. Okay. If there's a strong family history of kidney disease, you know, in families, you might have to be on the lookout for that. Mm -hmm. And some family members will actually be strongly advised, you know, to start the screening from an early age as well, depending on the condition, of course. Let's look at the signs. Yeah. What signs should we then watch out for? Well, it depends what you are also dealing with, but by far, mm. the problem with kidney disease is that it's a silent killer. You know, by the time most people uh, realize that they are sick, they will have lost more than 80% of their kidney function. It's very and strange by then because, I mean, it's too late. yeah, because when your kidneys is, is, is placed somewhere at your back, and I yeah. remember whenever I had kidney. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I'm not a nephrologist. I didn't say anything. <laughs> but I, mean, I know somewhere it's somewhere at the, at the back because when you have kidney infection or some sort of kidney pain, it, you feel it in your back. And I'm that's one of the I'm questions. Glad you know where I it know is. where it is. Yeah. Yes, we've got a, got a picture there exactly there what it is. <laughs> but I mean, look, there's a, I think sometimes we need to differentiate mm -hmm. between acute kidney disease and chronic kidney disease. Okay. You know, so far we've been talking about chronic kidney disease. Okay. You know, acute disease and acute kidney disease, you're going to present acutely. Mm. You know, whether you've got an, a, a kidney stone or whether you've got an infection, uh, you're going to start getting sick, you know. Mm. But, you know, and uh, those people, those patients tend to present earlier and quite often they'll be picked up early and be sorted out most of the time. Okay. But, you know, the worrying guys are the ones who've got chronic disease that is silent. So you know, the that diabetes, will be there for many, many years long okay. before it presents. And by the time oh. you present with symptoms, by the time you start feeling sick, you know, yeah. it's way too late to reverse whatever cause, you know, so that kidney. becomes really a problem. So if you're at high risk, probably have to go for some checkups, for some screening. But I mean, as acute, you want to And we want to break that down and sort mm. of guide people when to go, what questions to ask when you are at your specialist or your GP. So right. Benny from Benoni wants to know, hi, medical team. Recently, I've undergone a heart bypass operation. The question is, why is it necessary to take water retention tablets? Water retention or water, water tablets? That says water retention tablets. So, I mean, if you have a high heart bypass... Do you need more bypass, information from Benny? Must I ask you something? I, I, I suspect she's talking about tablets which get prevent water, water retention or get rid of okay. water. Mm. And it may be because the, when you have heart failure or damage mm. to your heart, your heart uh, sends signal, your body picks it up as, as if you don't have enough water in your body. Okay. So it senses 
that you don't have enough water in your body. It doesn't sense that the heart is not working. Okay. So all the hormonal systems that kick in tell your body to retain water and mm. then you swell up. Uh, and then that swelling makes the heart function worse and water can build up in the lungs and so forth and so on. So then we need to use medication to tell the body to get rid of some of that water so that okay. you actually feel better. All right, Benny, I hope that answers your question. And that, 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 that works through the kidney, yeah. but the problem is actually with the heart. But the problem is if you have a problem uh, with the heart and the kidney together, mm. you can see then it becomes a double problem because the kidney can't compensate for the heart's abnormalities mm -hmm. and, if you, and the heart can't compensate for the kidney's abnormalities. Remember, they work together. Mm -hmm. So people who have both heart and kidney problems, which is very common because it can occur with diabetes, hypertension, certain medications, often will run into symptoms and problems sooner than those who have only one organ affected. Okay, so we, we still want to touch on the whole testing, when to do that, but quickly, a uh, 30-year-old taking 40 milligrams of antidepressants, it's called Lorraine, yeah. L-O-R-E-N, um, it's been about six months, is there a possible risk on my kidneys, Dr. Mashabani? I'm trying to even remember what Lorraine is. In so Lorraine is Prozac. Prozac. It's oh, a generic for Prozac. Yeah. That's much, so that's yeah. a fairly high dose, Please, but high. it's mm. relatively unusual to be directly toxic to the kidney, is lowering okay. itself. No. But a lot of people who are depressed mm. use a lot of painkillers. So just be wary about that, especially. So, so take us through depression. the painkillers that are that we need to watch out for. So mostly the ones we talk, almost all painkillers will have some effects. Panados? Uh, Even panados, yeah? but they're much okay. less toxic than anti-inflammatories particularly, mm. like brufen, voltaren, cataflam, myperdol, genpain, uh, naproxen. That's one of the first things Acoxia. the GP gives Acoxia. you. Acoxia, there are hundreds. Acoxia. They are built and in... And the pink one, what's it called? Myperdol. Ma no. Uh, brufen. brufen. And they come in different names, they come in generic names, they come mixed with other medicines. So many cold and flu medicines will have ibuprofen, my bullet in there, in there, yeah. Well. So, okay, so let's get to so testing. You need to be careful. How often should you have yourself tested for kidney function, Dr. Mashabani? Look, it depends. I mean, what you are having. If, if you're you've taking <coughs> antifragilities every month. If you've got chronic conditions, I'll, let's just maybe make use of uh, take that patients with diabetes, for example. Mm. Minimum, I'll say once a year. You know, you just have to have your... Once a year? Yeah, once a year as minimum. a diabetic patient. The minimum, it depends. At your GP or do you need to go to the blood um, I the mean, your doctor people? is treating you. Okay. You know, should actually, as part of monitoring you for the onset diabetes. of complications, okay. you know, must actually, you know, in addition to checking your eyes mm. and uh, your kidneys must also be part of that Shame, as these guys well. are so inundated and busy. And, uh, but especially um, type 2 diabetics. So type yeah. 2 diabetics, from the time of diagnosis, yeah. you should you need be to be checked. checked. So, but type so 1 diabetics, usually, we know it takes some time for your mm. kidneys to be affected. So at the beginning, you may not need to have such regular and detailed <clears throat> testing, but often they will end up having testing because they have symptoms and other things. So what about people that, you know, just have maybe knee pains, you know, an, an athlete, for instance, you know, they've got this chronic knee pain or they have chronic back pain, as you mentioned, and they do anti-inflammatories mm. every month. They must check. So they or must still check. once a year. Um, and I think the issue really with athletes is that uh, uh, it's so difficult to say to athletes, uh, <laughs> stay away from analgesics, you know, because <laughs> even the day before, the, actually the morning of the event, you know, they it keep pumping, <laughs> taking in these non Sometimes high. during the course of the event as mm. well, and immediately post-event, you know, which is very, very dangerous. You know, you're dehydrated, you're exhausted, you know, you add muscle breakdown to the equation as mm. well, and you want to add your non steroidal anti-inflammatory, so you're just asking for trouble. And we've certainly seen few patients who presented with kidney failure after those events. So yeah. often these are things that we don't recognize or Stay even know. Yeah. Yeah. See, the problem is... So we need to quickly take a break. Sorry, Dr. Wadi, yeah. I'm always... <laughs> we're rudely interrupting Dr. Wadi, but we'll, we'll get to his point just after this. Please do continue sending your questions, comments and queries. World Kidney Day is what we're focusing. Don't go. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. World Kidney Day. So we know it's somewhere at the back. We know it's quite a pretty organ and apparently to Dr. Wadi, it's the favorite organ, the most important organ in the body. It's like Very not the heart, not, that's the, why you have two. not the bladder. Do you have two hearts? No. No. Wow. I have two lungs. Yeah. <laughs> 
I've got you, Dr. Wadi and Dr. Mashabani, our nephrologist in studio with us. We have a few questions to deal with, but quickly, a lot of people are wanting to know how do we get tested? What is the procedure? What do we need to know about testing? Um, what questions must we be asking? I mean, from the beginning, first of all, you should be, uh, uh, if you go to your GP for a cold or a flu or mm. anything, they should be checking your blood pressure. So high blood pressure is one of the earliest signs of chronic kidney disease, not in everybody, but in many people. Mm. Okay, so you should be having regular checks of your blood pressure. Also, if you have a high blood pressure, but even if you don't, at some stage, somebody should be looking at your urine. When you go to a GP for a general check, somebody should be checking your urine. So the commonest early signs of chronic kidney disease that you can look for without doing a blood test are a rise in your blood pressure, and abnormalities in your urine, maybe a little bit of blood in your urine, maybe some protein in your urine, mm. uh, some changes in your urine. Um, but even that is not foolproof. Sometimes you won't find much there or it can be easily missed. Mm. So uh, in those cases, if you have a strong family history, for example, or if you have mm. lots of anti inflammatory or if you're already diabetic or you already have high blood pressure for many years, you should be doing a blood test. And that blood test then looks for certain toxins which accumulate in your body when your kidneys are not working. Mm. The caveat is you can have quite a lot of kidney damage before those toxins even start rising. So your kidney is very clever. If you, that's why you have two, you have spare kidney. And so if you damage quite a bit of your kidney, you can damage 40 to 50% of your kidney sometimes before that kidney function test starts looking abnormal. Okay. So it can be a problem. So it's important to not just do the blood test, also check the urine, look at the blood pressure. And if you're at risk, uh, keep looking at that blood test and see if it's becoming worse, if it's rising, if it's becoming abnormal. So, so you're talking about you, um, but us as individuals, we don't know enough how to check. Are, are there any signs that we can do at home to check? Well, I mean, if you know how to use that dipstick yourself, okay. but uh, every clinic should be able to, you know, to do that. And every doctor who's practicing in the country, you know, should be doing at least a dipstick. You know, obviously not every day, but I mean, once a year or twice, depending on what you are presenting with and what you've been screened for, what you are known to have as well, and depending on your history and your whole profile. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a nice window, you know, the urine testing is a nice window to give us what's happening. I think the problem is that most people tend to wait until they stop passing urine, and by then we are dead. They you know, stop some people, passing. No, people yeah. will tell that, listen, I don't have kidney disease because I'm passing two liters of urine a day. You know, so, I mean, they are, the volume, that amount of urine per day has got nothing to do with the presence or absence of kidney disease. So many people with underlying kidney disease will continue to pass good volumes of urine fine. until right at the end. So because, I was just going to say, what are the symptoms? Gradually, because it develops gradually a lot of the symptoms, many mm. people will not notice that they're feeling really yeah. much sicker. Mm. They may feel that they're a bit yeah. tired, maybe they're not sleeping as well. Uh, I mean, so what, as you develop severe kidney damage, mm. normally then you get a bit of swelling, your eyes may look a bit puffy, you may feel very tired, you become anemic and pale, but that's usually features quite which late, develop yeah. quite late when you're sitting at like 25% or 20% mm. or less than your kidney failure okay. of your kidney function. Before that, you may feel very little mm. to nothing. Sure. Okay, that's scary. That is a real silent killer. So we want to look at the connection between um, kidneys and diabetics quickly, Dr. Mashabani. And diabetes. Yeah. How, yeah. how you mentioned the medication that could affect the kidneys, how I else mean the, look, the, is the, once the, a year good enough for the test? The diabetes itself, you know, it's a risk factor for kidney disease. And um, in some people, you know, and more so in those patients with poorly controlled diabetes, mm. you know, they tend to be and the tricky part, though, is that not every smoker gets lung cancer. Okay. You know, the same thing goes with the kidney as well. Mm. Not everybody who is poorly controlled will end up with um, a kidney disease. You know, there seems to be some other genetic predisposition to that, you know, in some patients as well, which is quite important. But um, if you are diabetic, there are different ways that the diabetes itself and all the changes that come with diabetes can actually affect your kidneys mm -hmm. as well. And the complications from the diabetes itself, 
you know, quite often some patients, for example, with diabetes, your sugar levels are sky high. Mm. You're passing lots of urine, you become dehydrated, recurrent infections in some okay. people as well, and lots of other um, things that, we, you know, are not just obvious to most people. But it's quite important just to keep your diabetes under control as much as possible, you know, because you'll never know if you're actually at risk of that. But and and is, once a year testing your kidneys is good enough? Yeah, I mean, if you are, look, it, it, I mean, it depends, you know, okay. what if, are you type 1 are you type 2 okay. how long have you been diabetic for what other complications do you have or comorbid conditions mm. do you have as well you know are you generally a healthy person or not okay. you know in some people we sometimes do it often you know mm. sometimes every three months sometimes every six okay. months but I think you know, the dogs are treating you should actually advise and again based on your previous reports because if you're already sitting with kidney disease it cannot be once a year, mm. you know, but if the screening this year is actually 100% normal, the urine is fine, the blood results are fine. So there's really no point to repeat the test. So, so it's a concern time. if maybe that uh, diabetic patient's con getting continuous kidney infection. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a, I mean, it depends what type of an infection as well, whether oh, okay. is it cleared or not, is it complicated or not complicated. Okay. You know, sometimes it's not as simple as it actually mm. sounds. So yeah. have the professional check it out and Definitely. ask questions. I, mean, I think that is a real problem in mm. South Africa. There's a lot of diabetics, particularly type 2 diabetics, who are on what we call autopilot. Mm. That means five years ago, somebody prescribed metformin for them for their diabetes, and they're and still they using the metformin, and their sugar is all over the show. Maybe one day it's 25, and the next day it's 10. It's because they haven't so, gone back for follow-up. No, and so to make sure that the diabetes doesn't affect them, that treatment is to not test it. Don't test the sugar because if I don't test the sugar, obviously it can't be high because even with diabetes, if, when the sugar is high, you may just be a bit thirsty, pass a bit more urine, but you often don't feel terribly ill. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? So many people in South Africa, there are many of them and there are very various reasons. Sometimes they don't want to go for follow-up. Sometimes there are barriers to care. They go to the clinic and they have to wait for four hours to be seen mm -hmm. and so another two hours it, to get yeah. their medication. Sometimes they don't have money to go to the general practitioner and so forth. But it's worth it. I want those people to take my advice. It is worth okay. it to maintain well, regular follow-up with your general practitioner, your family practitioner, your local clinic, whoever it is that can provide treatment for you, your diabetes changes. Mm. Doesn't mean metformin was working for you uh, five years ago, it's going to still be working for you now. Okay. Your body changes. Doesn't mean you didn't have kidney problems then, you're not going to have kidney problems now. Those things need to be looked at all the time in diabetics. So know your status. So know your status, know your kidney yeah, status absolutely. all the time. Okay, and just one, so it's just one thing about diabetes, you know, sometimes we come across few people, especially the type 2, who are going to tell you, my diabetes is cured. You know, every time I go to the clinic, my sugar it levels is, are low. Fine. I've even been told to stop my medication. Just look at them and say, really? <laughs> and, they, and the first question I'll ask them is doctor. that, have you ever checked your kidney function? Okay. You know, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you test that, you know, diabetes looks cured because they are now in kidney failure. You know, and as you move into kidney failure, you know, your, your requirements for those medications to be quite low. Actually, if you're going to continue taking your medication for diabetes, you actually end up with low glucose levels. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're, co you're cured, while in actual fact it's because you now have a complication, namely kidney failure, something that and, you don't And as to. you said, silent. Yeah. Okay, we need to take a, a quick break, but before we do, Assalamu alaikum, why is dialysis second priority in state hospitals? So if you can't afford private, what options? do we have and then we will inform you about the IMA kidney campaign that's running as well because they inquired. Dr. Wadi? Simon, it's not the dialysis is second Are you at Bada? Are you at a government? Yes, yeah, it's <laughs> not the dialysis second priority and okay. I'm sure Mdududu can tell you. It's not. Uh, dialysis is, mm. is not provided to everybody who needs it because there's a lack of resources so we have to we have to ration dialysis like many so other criteria. services mm. in, in South Africa. Uh, so not everybody can get access to dialysis. Mm. That means that uh, if you do not fulfill certain criteria or if there's no space available for you, mm. uh, a government hospital cannot guarantee that you'll get access to dialysis. And it really is a tragedy because there hasn't been a, a large increase in the number of available dialysis spaces around the country mm. in a long time. So there's quite a significant shortage and actually uh, the majority of people who present to a public hospital will not be able to access dialysis when they have NCS renal failure. This really underpins 
the importance of prevention mm. or an early screening and knowing that you have it so that you can plan for the future. And planning for the future may uh, mean uh, finding how you can access dialysis, saving up, getting onto a medical aid, those type of things. It's not the only thing, but it may include that. Uh, and maybe Mdiduzi can We will talk about the things. challenges within the public sector when it comes to dialysis and more no. with your questions just after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. The studio is warming up with our nephrologist in studio, Dr. Wadi and Dr. Mashabani from uh, Bara Academic Hospital. Quickly, let's talk about the public sector and dialysis. What are the challenges? Our last segment, unfortunately. <laughs> Look, I mean, there's a huge demand mm. and uh, certainly I don't think there's any public hospital that is coping with the demand. Okay. And part of it is because patients tend to present very late and by the time we see them they need dialysis and they need it now mm. you know so there's really no time to prepare them and um, there's really no time to even wake them up for transplant and uh, so the demand unfortunately is not meeting the supply so mm. which is quite our biggest challenge and it's an expensive uh, treatment and i'm sure it's comparable to other forms of treatment as well and having said that, I don't think that, uh, I think what is also contributing to that is the fact that our transplant rates are actually very low. Mm. So even if you can open thousands and thousands of slots, dialysis slots, mm. for as long as you are not transplanting. So the only way that these patients can exit dialysis is via death, which is not uh, desirable to say. Absolutely. So we really, really need family members to come on board as much as they are bringing their family members for treatment, okay. but you know, to consider organ donation as an option. You know, we are not doing lots and lots of preemptive transplant. Mm -hmm. You know, something that really means that you don't have to be dialyzed before you can be transplanted. So imagine a scenario where we're getting 100 patients who needed dialysis, but transplanting half of those patients long before they are even dialyzed. Mm. So probably that will accelerate things and it will create more slots as well. So can you, um, okay, this question still come, it's going, yeah. of, of, of knowing people over 65 that's been de denied treatment because you can't afford the treatment that patients pass, then pass away. I mean, is there a specific reason for patients over 65 that are, or is it just the challenges at the, at the hospital? I really haven't seen the cutoff okay. age of 65 on our mm -hmm. national guidelines. Okay. So the criteria no. specifically so says no that age a, is not a, a criteria. A criteria. Okay. But the criteria have to do with, uh, with other conditions. If you have additional conditions like severe heart disease or liver disease okay. or you have Associated, cancer, right. and then people who are older are more likely to have multiple conditions, that mm -hmm. is a problem. But I mean, at the moment in Johannesburg, for example, even if you fulfill the criteria, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to find a space because there, not be, okay. there may be a waiting list mm. for you, even if you fulfill the criteria because mm. there isn't enough space available. And, and we're really in a really dire state. Mm. There are non-profit organizations like the IMA, like Sultan Bahut Trust, mm -hmm. uh, who are trying to assist some of these patients, Today's really money, making yeah. a small difference, but a big, uh, overall, but a big difference in these individual patients' nice. lives yeah. uh, to try and support them, to try and help them until they can get on their feet or get a medical aid or get back into the public sector. And get well, we heard the one of the, the responders earlier mentioned that their dad getting um, a liver, oh, sorry, oh. Kidney yeah. transplant, how can I make that mistake? Mm. Um, a kidney transplant and um, what? It added 15 years to his mm, life. Absolutely. So, I mean, from, so an, Islamic perspective, from an Islamic perspective, yeah. this is a big thing in the, in the Muslim community. Transplant, is, yeah. Is, is it permissible to donate your kidney? Can I give my organs? Now, certainly there's two types of donation. You can donate while you're alive. So, because you yes. have two kidneys, you can, that's allowed. You can yeah. uh, safely donate one of your kidneys. We don't just go and take your kidney and say, hey, you look nice, you know, you look like you have a, you probably have a, a good kidney. There's <laughs> detailed testing done. And if there's any problem, if we're mm. concerned in the slightest, they want to move your, one of your kidneys. Uh, it must be done voluntarily. You have to do it out of the goodness of your heart. You have to do it to help another human being. Um, and it must be done in a completely safe way. Mm. I won't lie to you and say there's no risk. There's a risk you're having an operation. 
to having one your kidney. kidney. Mm-hmm. You will have one kidney. There's an increased risk of yourself getting kidney failure. But that risk goes up to about one in a thousand from about one in 10,000 or something like that. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So there is an increased risk, but it's still a small risk. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need to then be cognizant of what the risks are when you go and donate, donate, donate your kidney. Okay. Um, from a deceased donor perspective, mm-hmm. in the Muslim community, there's a difference of opinion amongst different ulama. Uh, but I think it should be brought onto your dinner table. Discuss it with your family. Go and discuss it with your uh, trusted ulama. Uh, and get the, the IMA is there, men, of course. Get advice from people around you and then mm-hmm. make a decision as whether you would want to register as an okay. organ donor after Kidney. you are deceased. Uh, organ donor. Okay. Either kidney, heart, lung, liver, you can put some limitations, say you can take my kidney, but don't take my heart, whatever, those type okay. of things. But uh, but then you must let your family know what your limitations are. And then, then if you are in a situation where you could be an organ donor, where you're brain dead and uh, determined by uh, medical testing to, to, to not be alive anymore, mm-hmm. but your organs are functional, those organs could help many people, seven, eight people. Uh, between the lungs, the heart, the liver, the mm. kidneys, the corneas, the bone marrow, uh, skin. So there's multiple areas where you could help sure. another human being. But take it to the dinner table. Take it to the dinner table, mm. bring it up, discuss it with your family, discuss it with your colleagues, bring it up in your conversations and uh, so the quest- discuss that what you would want to questions and answers can be found. <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. So, Dr. Mashabani, quickly, um, any connection between bladder and kidneys uh, if one has recurring UTI? Well, it's part of one system. You've yeah. got kidneys draining to the bladder mm-hmm. and then out of your body. Yeah. And if you keep on getting recurrent bladder infections and they can ascend up to the level of the kidneys, a condition known as pyelonephritis, you know, recurrent of that, the severity of that infection can actually predispose you to chronic kidney disease. Mm. The, the, the responders earlier mentioned has directly related to intercourse because it was the very first time. And once it was, was sorted, she's never had it again. So just explain that, what happens. Some then? sexual practices yeah. can actually contribute to urinary tract infection okay. as well, yeah. Okay, so just be careful and safe. All right, so quickly, um, does drinking energy drinks affect your kidneys? It's, it doesn't directly affect your kidneys as there's something in the drink which is toxic, but mm-hmm. it's got a lot of caffeine, okay. it dehydrates you, it can cause uh, withdrawal headaches, it's really bad news. Okay. It makes your mood erratic. Don't drink energy drinks. There's no reason to drink energy drinks. Stay away, stay away, stay away. Don't stay away from it. Um, And quickly, you know, people that are uh, youngsters uh, that are not living a healthy lifestyle, should they have any concerns of of having their kidneys tested? As you said, it's a silent killer. Well, it depends what type of uh, lifestyle that they actually Mm -hmm. uh, engage in. Maybe drink uh, lots of energy drinks, maybe. Um, Well, I mean, ideally, if you're on a good diet and... um, and a little bit of exercises. You are not on toxic substances mm. to your kidneys, uh, be illicit drugs, be it other substances as mm. well. And uh, you don't have a strong family history. You know, it's not something that you must check on a yearly basis, but okay. once in a while we can go in. But what we are also beginning to see now are the guys who spend more time in the, you know, in the gym, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, taking lots and lots of gym supplements and uh, lifting substances. all those. Steroid, steroid you know, plus. So yeah. they can actually. We are beginning to see a fair amount of them presenting with some degree of kidney disease yeah. to a point of requiring and dialysis And you, you've mentioned well. male dysfunction, dysfunction as well. Yes, um, related, to related to male dysfunction. Okay, so um, we have to wrap up. And, and I know Dr. Wadi is never going to have his real last word when it comes to kidneys, but we need to understand safe websites, safe um, um, information out there. Where do we access that? So you can go to the International Society of Nephrology website. Okay. You can go to the South African Renal Society. Mm. Uh, you can go to the National Kidney Foundation of South Africa. You can go to the National Kidney Foundation of the United States. You can go to the European Dialysis and Transplant. There's many okay. uh, professional That's organizations nice. which All give you that. detailed and uh, good, reliable information about kidneys. It's not rocket science. Okay. You don't have to be clever to be a kidney specialist. You just have to be sensible. Dr. Mashabani from the public sector, what do you need to say to viewers? Well, the public sector is trying its best Mm -hmm. and I'd really like to see the public trying as well. And then come on board and engage us, ask us questions and then look after yourself, know what you've got, know what you are taking as Mm -hmm. well. 
present early, try to be compliant with whatever medication that you are on. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Dr. Mashabani, Dr. Wadi. As always, uh, from the IMN, remember, do follow the social pages because they've got some lots of things happening. There were some questions around that. So social pages of the IMA, that is the Islamic Medical Association, they're highlighting kidney in a big way. Well, Kidney Day, the 12th of March, put it in your cal to calendar, talk about transplant, get this conversation going, go to your necessary ulama if you have some questions. And uh, we haven't even gotten to kidney stones, but do follow the safe websites. There's no quick fix to a healthy kidney. It is an overall healthy lifestyle. Next week, we talk again about healthy lifestyle and uh, part two because of the overwhelming response because of you. And uh, we'll take it to the salted range. So healthy lifestyle part two next week. Don't miss it.